Pastor, uh, thank you for inviting me to Davao, and uh, your staff has been very hospitable in uh, uh, touring me in your fabulous uh, Glory Mountain and Prayer Mountain. But uh, my plan, I must admit, that for this afternoon has been turned upside down because I merely wanted to ask you about your plans for 2023. But there are recent developments, I think, that uh, are important, and you have been discussing them. After the dust has settled, everything should end up in the court. Mm -hmm. So all of this noise, yeah. we are used to it. <laughs> it's just noise. Yeah. It's so, just propaganda. So nothing new It's for just you. to destroy my reputation by uh, trial by publicity. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I am a minister. I am a son of God. Mm -hmm. And that is part and parcel of my life and my ministry. As the Lord Jesus Christ said, blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Mm -hmm. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great mm -hmm. is your reward in heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I, I've been touring your facilities, and this is uh, not the first time I've been to your place here in Davao. There's a lot of activities going on. Has this case distracted you somehow? Uh, has it uh, diverted your attention to the more important things? Because you have many important, many things in the pipeline, as I, you know, as we see in in, in your area, but has this been a distraction for you in any way? Has it slowed down your work in any way? It doesn't, because okay. uh, this is my training. Okay. When uh, the God in heaven called me uh, from my denomination, he set me up. He uh, isolated me in two mountains. One is in Kitbog, mm -hmm. in uh, the uh, foothills of uh, Mount Matutum. Okay. And then after a year, he transferred me to Prayer Mountain, where okay. you went today, right. for five years. I was there all alone eating bananas and every day is persecution. It's like climbing Mount Tapo every day of my life. And that was my training. Mm -hmm. And after my training, uh, the visions, the audible voices and all the uh, revelations that came to me uh, completed my mm -hmm. spiritual ideology yeah. that I am uh, preaching to the whole world today. And so he sent me. Yeah. And I'm ready for this. That was a manuscript scale of the tribulation yeah. and the baptism of fire and the, uh, the uh, water of affliction that I drank and the bread of adversity that I have ate, uh, that I ate when I was there. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to it. Yeah. He sent me and uh, this is in a grander scale. Yeah. You know, after all, you are human. Are you somehow irritated? Uh, are you, do you find yourself becoming more philosophical and forgiving, as the good book would say? Or are you simply just ignoring, ignoring um, the it, noise, as you said? It doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, destroy my tranquility and peace. Okay. Because, as I said, that was my training. Okay. So the Prince of Peace is within me. And uh, you cannot say you have peace if you are not in the midst of a storm. Okay. And you're still calm and peaceful. Okay. And uh, they underestimated my, uh, my uh, resolve in uh, facing any problems like this because this is my discipline. Okay. This is what the Father made me ready for okay. in uh, heading this uh, congregation of the kingdom all over the world. And uh, if uh, the spiritual battle goes to the media, I'll be there facing them. If uh, the spiritual battle that we have goes to, uh, from government to government, I will be there. If it goes to personal, mm -hmm. I'll still be there. Any kind of fight that the devil br brings mm -hmm. upon me, using nations, using people, I will be there squarely yeah. facing them. Well, you know, because it's the holidays, Pastor, mm -hmm. do you think there's a charitable outcome to this? I mean, are you praying for maybe uh, people to realize the, the mistake that they're doing? And uh, is there any back channeling that, oh, that yes, maybe uh, yes. that, that's going on that you can... I know it's hard to talk about it because it's... It's in, it's in the, the legal system now. Yes. What can you share with us? Well, uh, Is there a chance? You know, there, I'm praying for my enemies. Okay. As, as uh, my commandment says, love your enemies. Do okay. good to them that hate you. Okay. In all of this, there's nothing personal in my heart. Okay. Um, of course, as you said, you, 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 that you're trained uh, to, to handle these, these uh, mm. problems. But um, I'm sure you're also concerned about the impact of this on, on, your, on, your, on your people. Uh, yes, and yes. I'm sure that um, some of them are not as used as you are, uh, you, as used to it as you are. Yes. 
And I'm sure they're also, you know... Uh, that was my biggest concern. Yes. Because uh, more than me, um, they cannot hurt me. Because yes. as I said, that's my discipline, that's my training. Yeah. But as a shepherd, yes. I'm looking out for the ship. All right. And I am always, uh, I'm always uh, investigating. Yeah. I'm always uh, trying to connect with our congregations all over the world. Yeah. How is the impact of this... Uh, character assassinations yeah. are doing to our people. Yeah. You know, surprisingly, Dante, because we are deeply rooted in the word of the Father, okay. we became more stronger mm. in the midst of all of these accusations. I was going to say, as you said, this has been going on for a while. Yes. But have you seen any impact on maybe your recruitment, your, your apostolic work? I mean, uh, uh, have, you been, have you been frustrated in any way by these people? Miraculously. It is Not the that. other way around. It's the other way around. Okay. Yeah, we have more people coming into the okay. kingdom now. Okay. We have more people coming into the kingdom, even in the United States, even in Canada, and all over the world. Okay. They more they are more sympathetic to the kingdom now. They are more focused on listening to my message right now. Okay. That is the miracle that happened. Right. And these uh, dissidents thought that when they do this. The kingdom would just dissipate, would just yeah. uh, break down, yes. and would just disappear from the right. earth, and uh, the sheep will be scattered. Well, I am telling them, it is the other way around. Yeah. Yeah, their, their disappointment would be that the kingdom is now more stronger right. than ever before. We have more conversion now in our surveys and statistics that I just read from our board of administrators. We have like... Uh, 150% more of conversion than when before this happened. Yeah. But operationally, I, I know before the pandemic, you were <clears throat> practically traveling nonstop, I think, mm. as you told me once, mm. because you have so many, so mm. many chapters uh, around the mm. world, you, you visit them. Uh, but of course, the pandemic put a stop mm. on that. But now that we're reopening, are you able to, to travel again or? That's, that doesn't matter? Well, it doesn't matter if I... Uh, I've, I've been traveling for 28 years. Okay. And I visited all these countries. And uh, that is how we organized all okay. of the satellite uh, churches all over the world. Now, uh, I'm thankful that uh, in this last day, we have the uh, miracle of modern technology. Okay. <laughs> that when I appear in this studio or in our cathedral there, and this camera are focused on me. It's a, the whole world yeah. sees me in real time. Yeah. So I can see my congregation, it's one of them on the screen, uh, attending my services here on Sunday as if they are in front of me in real time. Mm. So that's the miracle of modern technology that even though I would no longer travel. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm already tired of traveling. Mm -hmm. I'm not really tired in the spirit, but right, you know. Right, right, I've traveled all over the world. It's physically taxing, yes. yeah. Now, I am so satisfied because uh, when the pandemic came, everything was very highly organized. And, and this uh, work will just uh, grow exponentially mm -hmm. without me or with me present there physically the growth of the work will just grow exponentially. As I said, it is important for a kingdom nation like this to have this spiritual ideology completed. And when this, this, has, this has been done, it will just continue on and on and on and on. Even yeah. if I am not here anymore. Yeah. It will just continue, it will just explode, and uh, it will not stop. Yeah, I, I want to tie that in with the, the topic that we're talking about, mm -hmm. because you said that because the demands on you were so great and you, you needed to, to, to move around a lot, you decided not to get married. And I think uh, you dis decided to marry your church. Yes. Right? You're, you're, yes. you're devoted to your church. Um, I'm married to my work. Yes. And, oh. and I think people are very curious about you. They yes. don't know that about no. you, that you, you, decide, you decided to I, do that. Well, when the Lord Jesus Christ called me, okay. I had to detach myself from everything. Okay. that would distract me from the mission that he has given me. And Jesus Christ uh, is my model. He's my okay. father in the spirit. I followed him. And he was never married. Yes. <laughs> many, many well, speculations. Something, something that I'm you know, very familiar with, you know, because that's yes. you know, from the Catholic... Uh, so, yeah. me, uh, it's not, it's not uh, 
it's not a doctrine for us not to marry. Right, it's your choice. So all my, all my uh, workers here, they are free to do that. Yeah. But many of them have followed my example. Right. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 7, right. when you marry, you choose a good thing. Right. But when you are not married and only focus on the way of the Lord, you choose the better one. Right. So, you know, I think I would not do justice to my family mm. if I married. If you were gone all the time. I'm gone all the time. Yeah. I would not see my kids growing up. Yeah. Uh, but my calling was for me to just focus on my work, be married to the kingdom, be married to my work, and that is where my heart is. Right. And uh, what is this life? It is just one life, but if I can replicate it into all the lives of the people that followed me, right. that is what satisfies my heart, and that right. is what pleases God. Right. And just to clarify, that, because I think this is relevant because people are throwing all these nasty things against you. Uh, are you like the Catholic priest who took on a vow of celibacy? Or? Well, when I followed the, the Lord Jesus Christ, then the, that, that's when you I, I'll tell you a, a story. Okay. When uh, I start, before I started the kingdom ministry, I was in a denomination. Okay. It is an American... Pen Pentecostal. Right? Yes, Pentecostal. It is an American denomination. I was sent to Korea, the first Filipino, to attend the uh, global evangelism uh, that uh, took one million people in one place. So, at the end of our two weeks of journey there, we were praying. And this, this, this is what I said. And many people won't believe me because they thought I'm delusional. First time in my life as an evangelist to hear an audible voice from God when he said, I will use you in Cebuano. So <laughs> that's the first time I uh, had that uh, phenomenal uh, spiritual experience. So to make the story short, I went home and I heard that voice again and again uh, for uh, the third time. It was nothing to me. And uh, I had a girlfriend, an American one. And I was prone, I was already uh, ready to be to married, married yeah. to, to her. Someone from your church? Yes, yes. Uh, one of my, uh, one of my uh, friends uh, who went to Korea. But in the midst of that... You heard this calling. Yes, I had this calling. And uh, my uh, comfortable denominational nest was uh, <laughs> gone. And there was a problem, I cannot tell you. And this problem, I think, was the orchestration of God mm. that He pulled me out of that denomination, which I loved so much. Mm. And there was a power pulling me up. So I, he, I, I ended up in this mountain of Kitbug where the Blaans are. Mm. And there is no civilization at the time in the 1970s. And I was there for a year. And that is when the calling of God was cemented in me. And uh, the calling was that uh, I was, uh, I was uh, in the midst of uh, everything that is new. I was in doubt whether this is the voice of God or not. So I was there for a year. And God revealed himself to me so many, many times that all the doubts in my mind just were gone. And I knew 100% that, that this is it. God's calling me. Mm. It is God calling me. Mm. Now the ball is in my hands. All of these revelations I'm receiving, the supernatural phenomena that I've not seen before, and I'm seeing now, mm -hmm. were all gone. They stopped. The mm -hmm. ball is in my hands. I know that God is the one calling me. It's mm -hmm. up to me to follow Him or not. Right. So I weigh that in all the balances of uh, eternity. Yeah. Well, do you think you're being tested somehow? I mean, as you said, I mean, the pandemic, this case, mm -hmm. they sort of had a silver lining, yes. right? Because... Um, Yes, uh, that is when I decided okay. to follow Him. Right. And uh, that, that spiritual conversation with the Lord was that I had to detach myself from mm. everything, okay. only to Him. Okay. So, you know, I even bargained, Lord, take everything away. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll carry my cross and follow you. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing I'd like you to ask. I'd like to ask you. Okay. Please never my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to marry. I'd yeah. like to have a family. Yeah. But nevertheless, uh, uh, the word of God came to me. That was and, the price. And, uh, and uh, he did not force me. 
Yes. But I knew, yeah. I knew that uh, to perfectly follow him, yeah. I have to become like him. Yeah. So I chose the one, yeah. this one. I disappointed many people. Yeah. And maybe in my physical life, I disappointed myself. But in my spiritual life, in following him, it gave me that eternal satisfaction that I made that hard, hard decision to follow him. But I never regretted it. Yeah. So would it be fair to say that you won't back down from any challenge, but of course you won't, you won't um, let go of all of your legal rights and rights? No, be, right? just because I'm a pastor, right. I would not let go of my constitutional right as a right. Filipino. So we will fight the process okay. legally every step of the way. Okay. I think you're being a little bit too modest there, Pastor, because yeah. uh, you know, I go to your facility, I see pictures of you with mm. various political leaders paying their respects. Mm. Um, even some of my guests, previous mm. guests at Business and Politics, they whispered to me, I, I want to mm. talk to Pastor Paul Kibaloy. Mm. Um, I mean, is, is that sort of a double-edged sword? Because, I mean, you're, you're obviously you're motivated by your own, your own plans, right? But um, obviously this is also drawing some, some unwanted problems, right? The, their enemies now become, become your enemies. Yes, I, I am drawing uh, unwanted problems that uh, okay. have come up, you know, is, uh, instead of me only focusing on, on the your, spiritual. On your message, right? On, me, on my message, which is already there. Right. But, uh, you know, I'm a Filipino, and uh, we have a network that uh, would not back down, but only say the truth for the uh, interest of the Filipino people. And people gravitate to that. Even uh, politicians mm -hmm. gravitate to that. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of politician friends. Yeah. I have a lot of military friends that like my stand mm -hmm. and like SMNI. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why SMNI, as of this time, have received 57 awards oh, from award-giving bodies. I think one of these days you will also receive <laughs> one on business and politics. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I cannot, uh, I cannot discount the fact that uh, I am a voice to reckon with in the Philippines. And it is not my own doing. It, it just happened. Yeah. But uh, my, my, uh, my uh, uh, heart is for the Filipino people. Right. I uh, grew up in poverty. We are a poor family from Pampanga who migrated here. He's still in poverty. I grew up in poverty. Every meal is a challenge. So I grew up on the uh, grassroots where I can see the pain, humiliation, embarrassment of poverty. I, for one, at 11 years old, standing in front of a Chinese store to borrow rice. For a half a day, I cannot say anything yeah. until somebody pitied on me, mm. uh, a Chinese uh, guy. Yes, I remember the story. Uh, he told me, uh, why did you let this boy stand up here for half a day without giving him anything? Yeah. I didn't say anything. Um, I'm, I'm so, you were I'm just so waiting, embarrassed, yeah. you know. He gave me uh, a ganta of rice. Uh, sardines and udong and coffee and and, and so forth. So bring this, yeah. you can go. But you've come, you've come a long way since since those days. Yes, from those days, you know, uh, my life was already destined for this. Mm -hmm. My life was destined for this because when I was born, there are signs that uh, God will use me, yeah. and my mother uh, know that, right. and my father know that. So that when the time comes that my ministry was activated in this kingdom ministry which the Lord entrusted me, now it is here. And uh, when he sent me all over the world, I was all alone. Yeah. But he told me, I'll send you all over the world. Yeah. A standard of righteousness, a standard of judgment and, and salvation. And he did it. Now we are world, world, worldwide. Yeah. Uh, every uh, race, nationality has gravitated to my message. And you said, uh, as you said, that also uh, made problems to me. Mm. The success of this ministry was, uh, was uh, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And uh, those that uh, love me uh, really uh, say I succeeded in delivering this message and the kingdom uh, just exponentially grew and was blessed. But not all were happy. Yeah. If God in heaven had the Lucifer, if Jesus Christ had a Judas, I too have my own. Yeah. So uh, I'm just following the script that is written already in heaven. Mm -hmm. But as I said, Dante, 
all of this noise can die down, mm -hmm. we will all end up in court. Mm -hmm. When the time comes, they accuse me of all of this. The burden of proof lies on them. Right. We have all the truth. Yeah. We have all the documents. We have everything in our hands. Right. And sh right. they should face that. Yeah. Your ob objection to the NPAs and the whole left, really, is beyond ideological. I mean, you have, I think from the previous discussions we've had, it's a personal experience that you've had with, with, the, with the NPAs oh, yes. and how they harassed you yes. and your church uh, members. Yeah. Could uh, you remind us you about know, that? You know, Dante, I was so young. Mm -hmm. I already see these atrocities. Mm -hmm. I was still in Bible school. I was 19 years old. I'm now 72. They've been here harassing us, killing us for 53 long years. Mm -hmm. They've been terrorizing the countryside and I live in the countryside. And uh, I've seen uh, our uh, people, ministers, who are evangelizing in the Bow City from house to house. They were also there house to house. They would confront us with a 45 caliber revolver and a Bible here. Mm -hmm. And they would let us choose mm -hmm. which is more powerful, this Bible or this one. Is that something you, you, you yeah. saw or is that something that was reported to you? I saw it. You saw it. And then some of my ministers reported it to also. me also. Yeah. And we have one cadre, his name is Lingling Ling Pasahe, who was converted into the ministry and became a minister. Mm. And along this way, from this cathedral, is called relocation. It's just very close to us, about two kilometers from here. Uh, during that time, in the 1980s, this, this was their Fort Bonifacio. Mm -hmm. And uh, Agdao, uh, Ubaldi Agdao, or Jerome Agdao, was their uh, uh, Port Aguinaldo or something like that. And while this guy was evangelizing, trying to convert them, they caught him with two other ministers. The two other ministers were made to witness his killing. Wow. They were the ones who reported to us. He was made to sit on a chair without clothes, and then uh, this killer of an NPA gathered all the people around, and he got for a distance of like uh, 10 meters, he was running with two ice picks mm -hmm. on both hands mm -hmm. as soon as he uh, uh, arrived at where uh, Lingling Ling Pasai was seated, he just uh, put those ice picks here and killed him and then put them here. Killed him right away. And this guy was raising his hands, praising the Lord. And another member of ours was beheaded because he was a radio man. And I can tell you so many others, many, many others that they abused there is one in uh, in uh, Goma, Tex in Goma Digos, one uh, cousin of our administrator. They were being uh, extorted money from these NPAs. Mm -hmm. They did not give any money. They they didn't want to support the NPA. Mm -hmm. They were made to come down from their house, mm -hmm. made to sit on a chair, mm -hmm. both of them, and uh, they put the Garan rifle here on the man and shot him splattered his skull and his brains just went up to the roof brutally just because they did not give and all of this is all over the country mm. and it's personal to me mm. that's why i want to end this mm. terrorism mm. of the cpp and pa mm. and i i would like to add uh, yes sir they have infected the whole of society well Pastor, I have a couple more questions to ask, but first we'll take a quick break. This is the special edition of Business and Politics. We'll be right back.